A USI fringe meet, I think, a, an extremely important and uh, timely meet, given the unfolding situation across Europe and also across the globe. I think um, it's, it's entitled Resisting uh, Austerity in Europe. And I believe that austerity, you know, there's a kind of euphemism in there. It's austerity relating to workers, poor, the sick, the elderly, and pretty much anybody except the idle rich who have created and sustained this situation and whose only interest is in getting the gravy train back on the rails, it would appear to me. Union Solidarity International is a new project set up using social media and digital communications and we launched our website on the 1st of May, of course, on International Workers Day. It's been supported by a number of trade unions in the UK and Ireland and I'm pleased to say a number of trade unions in Greece with representing hundreds of thousands of workers including the Athens Labour Centre but also the teaching unions in Greece who have officially endorsed our project and who wish to participate in it. Because when I visited, when I visited Greece and I was there visiting a number of trade unions, what was absolutely striking for me was that people in Greece thought they were living in their own bubble. And when we actually had a conversation, they said, Andrew, tell me what's happening in the UK and Ireland. There was a dawning realisation with people in the room that the same thing's happening in other countries across Europe because they've been battled so much that you know sometimes it's difficult to have a, a wider perspective about what's facing workers in Portugal and Ireland and Italy and <coughs> Spain, of course. And I think USI is timely for that for that reason because it's providing a social media platform to people to communicate because with. the efforts of uh, Union Solidarity International, I think that what you, you guys are up to uh, is uh, magnificent. Uh, in, in this day and age, in these dark ages of ours, uh, such efforts are um, sine qua non. It, 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 we are so fragmented. Mm -hmm. and so that's, what that's just one of the examples of some of the the technology that we're trying to bring to the table. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we had bus workers, a very topical issue of course at the moment, communicating with bus workers across the world using this sort of technology, having a conversation about what's going on in their sector and what is affecting them on the ground so we can share ideas, share best practice and share experiences in order to try and you know, up our game and hit how we fight back against neoliberalism and against companies that are treating the workers atrociously. And this is just an example of some of the, the, some of the technology that we're bringing to the table. We'll be going to be doing work across Europe with unions, including our comrades from Gibraltar, who are sitting at the front, helping us link up with trade unions in Morocco and Spain using some of this technology, giving life to the experiences of trade unionists across the world on a daily basis, whatever medium it is, podcasting, video conferencing, our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and hopefully by you know, utilising this social media, we're, we're able to give it oxygen and able to amplify the stories of trade unionists that are going across our world, because it's very important that we're in this game. Just some examples up here in the screen. I mean, I was trying to pick up my phone there, I don't know where I've put it, but you don't, you don't need a laptop these days, everything's on, your, everything's on your phone. And just some of the statistics up there are, st are startling. And where trade unions and trade unionists need to be in using this sort of technology. I mean, I don't need to go through all of them, but I mean, the six million people access the internet over their mobile phone for the first time in the last year, that's just in the UK. So, for trade unions being able to get our message out there, using this technology on a daily basis is absolutely essential and we've got a lot to learn from other organisations like the Occupy movement, the UK Uncut movement, about how we can make our message as accessible and as interesting as possible and I think that's absolutely, absolutely critical to what USI is trying to do in terms of the fight back against austerity and neoliberalism. And there's, as Mark said in his own comments, if there has been a if there's ever been a time for solidarity across Europe and beyond, it's now with the onslaught against working people. I mean, some of the statistics up there are just frightening. In Greece and Spain, over 50% of young people 
or unemployed. You think about that, that's a classroom. I remember when I was leaving school, half the classroom isn't going to get a job. The other half who do get a job is probably part-time, doesn't pay very well. Mm. Minimum wages have been slashed. Collective bargaining agreements are going to be no more in Greece in the very near future. They're moving towards individualised contracts as part of the bailout. It's frightening stuff. And so the need for solidarity is absolutely essential. And working with our comrades, particularly in Greece and in other countries, we hope to get their message out there into a British and Irish audience. Speaking to them, I, I said, when I met the Greek trade unions, I said, what can we do? And it wasn't money, although money is always helpful, of course. But what they said is that we just want people to hear our story. Because it's battered by the press. In Greece, we're not going to get a fair crack at the whip in this country either. So we need to find outlets and mediums where we can get our message out there and to make it as engaging, engaging as accessible as possible. So that's what USI is designed to do. It's designed to connect workers across borders using all these different types of technologies so that we're able to make our story as trade unions <coughs> as engaging and as interesting as possible so we can campaign for an alternative. Comrades, um, what uh, we're talking about at the moment is austerity in Europe and just to give you um, a flavour of the current situation um, as it stands, there are now a dwindling number of uh, economies that are growing. The only one that is growing in any appreciable way, of course, is Germany, and even that is the growing at 0.5%. Uh, most countries, including the UK, are in recession, and in the UK, of course, we're in a double-dip recession, and getting worse. But we've got a recession in the UK, in Italy, in Spain, in Ireland, Portugal and Greece, and in the rest of Europe, apart from, from, from Germany, uh, there's stagnation. There's nothing much happening uh, in terms of the economy beginning to grow. And this has been going on for some time, and of course what has happened is that governments have implemented austerity packages in order to stimulate growth, and of course we know full well that that's not going to help, and we know full well it's certainly not, uh, not working. And of course what countries are doing across Europe is attacking workers' employment rights. The first thing the new Italian technocrat uh, Prime Minister did was to make it easier to sack people. That was the first thing they did in order to combat uh, uh, the crisis. We've seen that happen in country uh, upon country. Governments have taken the opportunity to get what they've always wanted, a, a dismantle employment rights. And in the UK, of course, we've seen the Beecroft report, which aims to uh, take away rights that are very basic in terms of employment in the UK. And I'm sure you're familiar with what Beecroft has been doing. But take that a step further and look at other countries in Europe. You've got an even worse situation. Collective bargaining is being dismantled across Europe. In a number of countries, and Jim will tell you in Ireland, the, the national agreements that existed between the unions and the government and the employers, they've been put on hold. In country after country, national collective agreements that apply to everybody within an industry are now being dismantled by governments who are saying you no longer can do that, so they're moving down towards regional pay, and as has been said in some countries now, into individual contracts of employment, and the loosening up of employment uh, laws, which means that companies can take on agency and temporary and precarious uh, workers. And that's a, a very, very important um, issue, I think, for trade unions. As we've already heard, uh, unemployment in Greece is at 22%, and 15 and 24-year-olds, the rate is at 54%, uh, which is absolutely uh, appalling. And we know that the democracy is being undermined in Greece, it's been undermined in Italy, it's being undermined in Central and Eastern Europe. I've got to say, one of the worst countries, not well reported at the moment, has been Hungary. They set about dismantling employment rights, collective bargaining, loosening up employment in order that people have to work in precarious employment. And that goes unnoticed at the moment. But what they do in one country, you know as well as I do, it moves on um, around, around the, the rest of Europe. Comrades, I believe that what we've got is an attack on the European social model. 
something that we've supported and defended, the European social model that gave us decent employment rights, maternity and paternity leave, that gave us the working time regulations, that gave us European Works Councils, that gave us health and safety legislation, the attack on the social model, I think, is designed to drive down standards across Europe. And that's being driven by the IMF, not the International Metal Workers Federation, but the, the International Monetary Fund, uh, the European uh, Commission, and the European Central Bank. And what they're trying to do is do the things, I think, that they've always wanted to do. How do we combat it? Well, I believe the unions are going to be absolutely central to this. And as you know, recently we've set up the new uh, international and European federations, Industrial, uh, and um, we're very, very much involved in that. In fact, last week in Copenhagen, I've got to say, I think that uh, Unite played a fantastic role in establishing that. But at European level, I think we've got to get an agreement across all countries that we've got to defend employment rights irrespective, irrespective of how we feel about it. But we also need to get the European TUC, Industrial, Uni, and all the other federations actually coming together and making it absolutely clear that we're not prepared to accept the situation where workers' rights continue to be diminished. And that's why it's so important the Spanish miners' strike that's currently taking place, a general strike of miners in Spain, it cannot go ignored. We have to get behind them and support those people because they are standing up to defend what they've got. And I know that there are other unions throughout Europe are doing exactly the same. So I believe, Mark, that fighting austerity has got to come from trade unions. I think Unite's got to be at the forefront of that. We we'll welcome the, the new initiative from, from USI. And I think the availability of the technology means that all of us, wherever we work, whichever sector we were in, can keep up to date with things that are going on, take part in campaigns, support in organizations such as the Spanish mine workers, and our own campaigns in regard to Rio Tinto and the Olympics, etc. I think it's a good way to do it. And I think that we work through our trade unions, we'll be able to combat some of these terrible excesses that are going on, the dismantling of trade union rights, the dismantling of collective bargaining, and the dismantling of the European social model. Thank you very much. Greetings, comrades from the beautiful country of Ireland. Um, a lot of the issues that I'll be covering here will be mainly in the Republic of Ireland, but because it's in a bailout program, but a lot of the um, the cuts and the attacks on uh, working people is happening in Northern Ireland as well as uh, in the Republic. Um, just on the question of democracy, there is no semblance of democracy mm. in terms of uh, any input from the citizens right across Europe into what's happening in Europe. We have uh, a situation in the Republic which entitles us to a vote uh, and a referendum whenever there's a change in an EU treaty. And this is not something that's been handed down by the Irish government. They absolutely don't want uh, to be within a mile of having to go through a referendum every time there's an EU treaty change. But 4 million citizens voting on behalf of 400 million. There's just absolutely no uh, move towards democracy across Europe. And we have that uh, right to a referendum because uh, of, uh, an Irish farmer, in fact, uh, Raymond Crotty, brought a case uh, through the courts, was uh, vilified, criticised, he was tying up the courts, you know, costing uh, money and all the rest of it. But he, he, he stood up to it and got the right uh, for a referendum to be held uh, on any change in the EU treaty. There's also um, a clear uh, put, uh, you know, position from the Irish government that there's no embarrassment. If the result goes wrong the first time, you run the referendum again. You just throw the decision in the bin. So there's no um, sort of uh, embarrassment uh, to do that. And in fact, uh, a few years ago on the uh, Lisbon Treaty, it was rejected. The Nice Treaty was rejected, but they run the referendum again. The latest EU treaty on all the austerity stuff, not just uh, being inflicted on people across Europe, but now written into the Constitution because of that uh, recent referendum uh, in Ireland. And Tony has referred to, uh, and it's politely putting it, that they put in these technocrats now yeah. uh, into positions. None of us uh, cared a damn about Berlusconi being gone. But the people did elect him. And uh, what was put in, uh, in, in, 
Italy and in Greece was uh, exactly uh, what the, the markets wanted and the markets demanded. So, you know, democracy, even decisions <coughs> being taken by, uh, by people uh, in their own countries uh, are uh, being torn up. We got a glimpse in the Republic of what could be possible. We had full employment. We had, for the first time, uh, immigration into our country. We've always had, all those generations, have an emigration out of our country, scattered to the four winds across, uh, across the world uh, for, from Ireland. We had that opportunity, we saw that full employment, and we saw the Republic beginning to look better with different colour skins and different, color, different cultures and you know, different influence coming into the country. But thanks to bankers, to speculators and government ministers, they destroyed what could have been possible uh, for our country and uh, destroyed it in, 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 in a very quick time. There is not just a divisiveness across Europe, uh, there's a racist element, uh, certainly in Ireland, the way this has been dealt with and the way this has been reported. You know, the uh, people of Greece are being uh, looked at as, you know, not being uh, fully on board in terms of what needs to be done, uh, lazy, uh, corruption, all the stuff that uh, is, is labelled at the people of Greece. Uh, and it's a horrible uh, way for uh, the people, the proud people of Greece to be treated. And part of what we're doing here with the USI is to raise these issues and us to stretch a hand of solidarity to the people of Greece. Not that we look down on the latest uh, country that's in a bailout. And I had mentioned Costas' name in the notes, uh, thinking Costas was here. But I'm delighted now that I'm meeting you and to be able to extend that solidarity uh, through uh, this meeting to uh, the people of Greece. Because what the USI would have to do at least is give us the opportunity to ch exchange the stories, exchange the truth as to what's happening, because all of the governments don't want any solidarity on, on, on all these issues. They want us to have their version of what's happening in Greece, their version of what's happening in Portugal, their version of what's happening in Italy, and it's all down to either greedy workers, lazy workers, or whatever it is, and you would have got the spin on what's happening in Ireland, which is not remotely uh, near the truth uh, of what's happening. And Part of uh, what's been built up by the Irish government is that we're the good uh, sort of good behaviour people. Uh, we're the quiet uh, people that is going along with all these changes. And uh, you know why are you protesting on the streets? Why aren't you just going with the, going with the flow? And it's all, of course, in the name of getting us back into the markets. The victory in Ireland will be the day that we can access the markets. But well, we're not going to get there uh, even in those terms because the next thing that's going to happen is a second uh, bailout program uh, in Ireland. And the elites have to convince uh, the Irish that the bailout program, of course, is working, uh, which, of course, is not working. They have to show the Greeks that they have no one to blame but themselves and they've uh, broken the rules and they've gone down the wrong route, pull them back into the mainstream and we'll all uh, live happily ever after. The Irish people are not convinced in any shape or form uh, uh, that uh, we need to be, we're different to the Greeks and we're the, the poster pin-up uh, buys of, of Europe because of what we're doing. It's absolutely the opposite. The unemployment in Ireland uh, is the highest rate in the EU 15. There's 15% 15 unemployment uh, in Ireland. Uh, it'd be higher if it wasn't for immigration. The scourge of immigration back into the country uh, and uh, of course is the uh, inestimable part of the uh, forecasts that are being made on uh, unemployment, uh, the unknown part of it being the immigration. We have the second highest long-term unemployment rate uh, in the EU 15. Young people being unemployed, no future, and all the uh, problems that come with not having a future, and feeling hopeless uh, in terms of any uh, pick-up in that. The public services, uh, north and south, uh, the attempt towards privatisation, uh, you know, you, uh, there's people now in Ireland who are worried, young people with young kids, worried about the illness that just comes with having children and the costs attached to that and not being able to afford uh, to, uh, to, to bear that cost. Uh, looking at the mortgage uh, arrears building up and the fear of that and the fear of, you know, eviction because the banks are just merciless when it comes to the, uh, comes to the, the, the uh, arrears that are uh, building up on mortgage payments. And, the austerity programme and the cuts, it's not just that we don't like cuts, it won't work. Cuts, you won't cut your way out of this austerity. And one of the experts recently described it as trying to starve your way out of a famine. Mm -hmm. It just can't be done to uh, cut your way out of this. And 
We've got to show that it's not working in Greece, it's not working in Ireland, it's not working in Portugal, it's not working in Spain. And we've got to see how we link solidarity across the peoples of these countries, because that's their only hope. And what was em emphasised in our General Secretary's speech earlier was, first of all, the strength that we need in the workplace, the strength that we need in the communities, and that strong hand of solidarity that builds from that across on the political, uh, on the political stuff. Don't leave boundaries divide us. Don't buy in to that we're different to the, to the Greeks, we're different to the Portuguese. That strength and that hand of solidarity is built on the sort of union that we're talking about in Unite. Otherwise, it's a weak hand of sympathy. Nobody wants sympathy. We can't offer sympathy to workers across the world. It has to be an absolute hand of strength uh, uh, for solidarity. Coordinating that at the European level, and I know this is all easier said than done, but through the USI, through what United is trying to do, through, through the ICTU, Irish Congress Trade Union, through the TUC, through whatever links we have uh, right across the trade union movement and the political uh, change that we need for working people right across Europe and right across the world can be delivered in the sort of solidarity that's raised here at this meeting and through the United Conference this week. Thanks. Thank To thank first of all Unite the Union and especially Andrew Brady for the invitation and the hospitality here in Brighton. Uh, I am a representative of Athens Labour Centre, uh, the name is ECA in Greek. It's a regional uh, organization in Athens. It's the third bigger uh, syndicate in Greece after the Confederation of Public Servants and Confederation of, uh, um, sorry, of uh, Private Sector. Uh, ECA consists of uh, 547 uh, sectoral and corporate labor unions in Athens. Uh, I have to agree what uh, before said Len and uh, Jimmy and uh, I would like to, s to say some thoughts. Uh, Greek working class has been hardly hit by the economic crisis the last three years and this situation will continue with a new government coalition of pro-bailout parties, the conservative New Democracy and the Social Democratic, PASOK and DEMAR. The austerity packages have reduced the wages of public servants and the pensions from 30 to 60 percent. They have increased the VAT at 4 percent even in the basic goods. They have made cuts in health system and public education. And for the first time, by law, the minimum wage of collective labor agreement decreased by 20% and by 30% for young people under 25. This means that a worker that is 44, 24 years old uh, will earn at about 400 euros a month. And also they have cut the employment benefit, which is for one year, and it's 300 euros. The pension funds are ready to collapse due to the unemployment, the reduction of employer social contribution and the haircut of Greek government bonds. Uh, pension funds have lost 10 billion euros from this haircut. We can say that Greece is in a humanitarian crisis as well as official unemployment rate is 22.6% and the unofficially is estimated at 30%. Every day we have at least one suicide and the number of homeless people reached 45,000. Every day the condition becomes more and more difficult. ECA has the pleasure to participate in USI. It's a really a very interesting initiative and I believe it's a good start for the role that trade unions have to play in this hard economic condition all over the Europe. The last decades, trade unions defended exclusively the rights of their employees. They acted, we can say, only as corporations. Nowadays, the things have to be changed. In Greece, for example, and due to the particularities of the Greek economy, which means that we have a lot of small and medium businesses, the majority of workers, Greek and especially for foreigners, are out of unions. The unemployed people that will reach the 30%, as we said before, are out of unions. Also, young people believe that trade unions in Greece are a part of the system and not next to them. 
This pathogenesis of the trade unions must be confronted. The pressure to the working class will be harder and harder, and the most ex extreme example at this time is the working class in Greece, followed by Spanish, Italian, Irish, and English, I think. So we have to make three very important steps. The first one is to change the role of trade unions. The unions must unite the whole working class and not only their members. These unions have to include young and unemployed people. The trade unions need to gain the trust and embrace especially young and unemployed. I would like to mention some points to be given special emphasis, especially on countries with deep economic crisis. The first one is the social networks. The social security system is ready to collapse all over the Europe. We have to make solidarity networks in order to support people that suffer. We have already decided to open a social clinic inside the building of ECA with the participation of doctors that want to help people without social security. For example, the Labour Centre of Salonika has already a very successful social clinic with volunteers, doctors and dentists that works every day. Uh, another example, uh, steel workers that, uh, that are in strike for 235 days. Uh, a lot of federation and trade unions concentrate food and money for them. For example, in my bank, I, was, I, I work in Greek uh, Post Bank, we have a committee that uh, is supported by the syndicate that collected money in order to buy goods for the strikers. Another issue, racism and fascism. The trade unions have to fight racism and fascism. Immigrant workers are a part of the working class, so trade unions have to support them. In Greece, Neonazi's party Golden Dawn has won 7% in this election, and I'm sure that it will be used as the helping hand of the government policy. Fascist gangs have already organized terrorist attacks against immigrants, and I'm sure they will also organize attacks against working struggles. ECA has a very successful net for immigrant workers that helps them with state documents and their rights. ECA also supports anti-racist and anti-fascist movements and demonstrations. Banking system and public sector. The agenda of the United Union that I have already read is very interesting. One of the basic demands of the union movement is the democratic control of the banks and financial institutions. Working class is paying the huge debt of the banks that transfer to the public debt, and this is the basic reason of internal devaluation. From 2008, all governments keep giving billions of euros to the Greek banks in order to escape the collapse, and the last week they gave 60 billion euros to the Spanish economy. The last three years have been funded 106 billion euros in guarantees, bonds and cash. With the second package, only the four biggest Greek, private Greek banks will receive 48 billion euros for refinancing them. And the two public banks that are the healthiest in the Greek banking system, uh, they won't be refinanced them. Also, unions must defend the basic public infrastructure which means water, electricity, and public transportation. Another issue is consumer movements. Trade unions have to support the existing consumer movements or to create new ones. In Greece, these movements don't play a consistently significant role in order to control prices in, contra in contrast with West and North Europe countries that have very strong consumer movements. Last year, there were some movements from citizens against tolls and uh, the increase uh, in tickets in public transport. The prices of the basic consumer goods are very high, higher than other European countries. Greece has the lowest salaries in the Eurozone and the highest prices. Labour centres all over Greece have made the first step, which is the training. In order to create the consumer committees all over Greece through labour centres. The second step especially for Greece and European economies with hard austerity packages as Portugal, Ireland, Spain and Italy is to resist, not separately, but united against the austerity policies and the dissolution of social cohesion. The struggle is no longer trade, but political. We have to fight for an independent, strong trade union action against the neoliberal policies. The main issue for the Greek workers during this current period is the fight against memorandum and Troika's policy. The third step is the international solidarity, especially the last years that working class has been hardly hit by the economic crisis. Greece, which is the weakest link in Eurozone, is the first victim of this violent austerity. 
Solidarity among the people of Europe is a resistance to austerity and to the imminent collapse of the welfare state throughout Europe. For this purpose, trade unions in Europe have to create a strong common front. USI project is a very important step in this direction. The leaders of European Union are united against people in Europe. We have a duty to unite working class all over Europe. Thank you.